Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to F1 Manager 23 Career Mode on the PS5. Uh, it's round 13 of our first season with Mercedes. We're heading to Spa Francorchamps for the Belgian Grand Prix. Right, so I've been looking forward to this one. Uh, sprint weekend, uh, so we've got uh, two races. We've got the uh, the short, I think, twelve lap, eleven lap sprint, and then uh, the uh, the main feature after that. Uh, and we have a brand new rear wing, which looks to have significantly improved our car's pace, uh, removed a fair bit of drag, given us a bit of a boost to our cornering speeds. Uh, and certainly given us the best DRS on the grid. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. I think uh, I think we might possibly be in contention for our first win. We've got a brand new engine uh, sitting on the bench, ready and waiting to be used. And uh, we also have uh, brand new ERS units. So the question I've got now is, do I go ahead and take the penalty here because it's a sprint? and use the sprint race itself to try and make our way back up the grid for the main race. And I think I'm probably going to do that. It could be very interesting. I'll certainly uh, add a bit of drama, which is always, uh, always a good thing. How you doing, uh, Victor? and Bakir and Mr. Water, good to see you guys. Right, uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Let's have a look at uh, the circuit information first of all. Uh, so Spa is, as it always is, um, just a series of high-speed corners and flat-out straights uh, with a couple of um, very low speed chicanes and hairpins bookending the uh, the lap itself. Uh, as you can see, once you get past turn one, uh, it is flat out pretty much all the way through until the end of the lap. You know, well, pretty fast, not flat out, but very fast indeed. Certainly flat out from the source hairpin all the way through to the end of the Camel Straight. Uh, once you start accelerating through Eau Rouge and up through Radion, it's. Uh, it's definitely somewhere where we we want our car to be as uh, as quick as possible and with our new rear wing that we put on the car at the end of the stream last night we potentially have the ability to do just that as you can see our acceleration still isn't great uh, but we we do have very good high speed downforce we have uh, a pretty good top speed and we have the best drs on the grid so that really does bode well uh, for this Grand Prix. Let's, uh, let's just check we've got as many parts as we need before we go any further. We've got two chassis. I think I've got a couple more on the way. Have I? Mm, no. Yes. Yes, I do. I've got two spare chassis coming. Uh, and then we'll see we've got a couple more rear wings on the way and we've got some side pods coming as well to uh, replace the ones that are going to break at some point. Right, okay. Let's head to Belgium. This weekend we're in Belgium in the picturesque province of Liège. Halfway through the season, it's too early to call the championship. Can teams make good before the summer break, or will they be hoping for a reset? Spa-Francorchamps is famous for its long straights and fast corners. Drag efficiency will make all the difference here as drivers zoom through the famous sequence of Eau Rouge leading up into Radion. But a twisty middle sector keeps things tricky down on the track. This weekend will be taking a slightly different form as we have the addition of a thrilling sprint race thrown into the mix. Stay with us then as the weekend gets underway.
I'm not quite sure I'd call the sprint race thrilling, but yeah, we'll see how things go, I suppose. Right, uh, let's see. We didn't do any uh, of our targets here. That's not a mistake. That is deliberate because if we do take penalties, I have no idea where we're going to end up. So I didn't want to promise anything that I couldn't deliver. Um, I probably should have gone ahead and done the qualifying ones, though, because the penalties were, b would be applied after the fact. So, yeah, we probably have just actually cost ourselves a bit of extra money. Who knows, though? Maybe we can do a positional gain guarantee once qualifying is out of the way. Like I said, we'll, we'll see how we go. So, uh, we've got one session to try and get the car nailed as best as possible before uh, we go into sprint quality. Uh, so, with that in mind, I've got one 100% setup on the game this year, uh, which we're going to start with. We're going to go with uh, Russell's car first of all, uh, and that is a 3.5, a 9.5, a 4.6, a 3.15, and a 0.3. Uh, so that's the setup I got 100% in on a Red Bull on the PS4 version. Uh, we are going to go 15 laps at Spa. I'm going to drop the pace, try and protect the parts as best we can. Let's... Uh, oh. Yeah, that engine's not going to make it, is it? All right. Uh, let's have a look at Hamilton. Mm, might make it. I think we pretty much ran those engines ragged. Uh, in terms of the gearbox, that one will last just uh, we do have to consider putting on a new gearbox for Hamilton uh, as well in this Grand Prix we have got new ERS modules standing by which we will put in for qualifying uh, just to get that penalty out of the way would much as I would love to take new engines as well I just can't afford to put new engines in that's another 10 million uh, which would certainly put us in debt and break our confidence with the board which is not good uh, but on top of that it would also um, eat massively into our remaining cost cap we don't have a huge amount left and that would that would take a lot of it out so uh, we will have to leave it like that so we've done uh, the setup for Russell we're gonna have to re rely on the book from last year for Hamilton's setup. And let's hope we can nail this out of the gate. Uh, I am going to go with this one. So I'm going to go with a 2.5, a 9.5, 4, 6, a 3.5, and a 0.75. And let's see if that one works. Right, uh, we've got the right tyres on. I think... Actually, let's go with the mediums. We'll save the hards for uh, practice two on Saturday. Uh, let's do the driver options for Lewis. There we go. And we are good to go. How you doing, Mohammed? And as always, we're going to start the session with uh, a ham cam lap, so you guys can see the circuit from helmet view. Uh, view. Yeah, loud and clear. Curbs, or door curbs. 
Yep. go as we come out of the bus stop and uh, dive down towards the La Source hairpin that is a lap of spa in the new helmet cam All right let's uh, speed time up Yeah, it's a huge difference in lap time between our two drivers. Is that down to engine? What is causing such a large deficit between the two? It can't just be gearbox that's responsible for one and a half seconds. Well, it's a long lap. Maybe. Maybe it is. Um... Mediums, mediums, so I did put the right tyre on both drivers. Hmm. Yeah, why is Hamilton... God, can I... a dodgy gearbox be really worth that much time? That is insane. All right, it's told Hamilton to uh, jump out of the way when Russell catches up to him, which is going to happen pretty quickly. <laughs> Again, I would have loved to have put Mick in the car for uh, a session this, this weekend, the circuit where his father made his Grand Prix debut and then got his first Grand Prix win a year later. But <laughs> we need... Like <laughs> Uh, we need both of our drivers in the in the car because they only have two sessions to get themselves prepped, not just the car, but themselves in terms of track knowledge. And you know, handing over one of those two sessions to our reserve driver is just going to leave them massively underprepared going into the uh, into the sprint. Let's see if we can have a balance check. Balance check. Okay. 75%, that's not great. 80% is not great either. Um, we're going to have some work to do here. Let's give them uh, another five minutes or so on track before we call them in. So quite a lot of work to be done here. Uh, let's see. The rear wings can need to change, I think. Yep. The question is now, which way does it go? I've got one setup that's a nine, and I've got one setup that's a ten. I'm going to go with the ten. So the ten I've got is a three 
10, 5, 5. 3.15 and a 0 0.10. You're getting fed up with the chat, keep crashing. Yeah, it's frustrating. And I have to keep checking my screen and pressing reload. Mine keeps uh, disappearing every now and again. Let's go with that. That is pretty close, I think. Assuming that the rear wing's correct. Right, yeah. We'll go ahead and confirm those changes for George. Uh, for Hamilton, let's have a look at this one. Again, this could go either way, couldn't it? Oh, I put him on a 10.5, not a 9.5. Oh, I, I fucked up. <laughs> Okay, so let's go with the 10 again. Let's go with the same setup. 3, 10, 5, 5. Uh, 3.15. And a point one. Let's take a look at that. The front wing looks good. Braking stability looks good. Cornering looks good. Traction, yeah, it's about right, maybe. Um, straights, yeah, I, I think that might be it. And here we've got a yellow flag. Oh, we've got a crash for Nick DeVries. Okay, so we've got DeVries. Oh, and he's gone into the wall at no name. He's literally gone into the wall. He just disappeared. <laughs> I remember when we did our uh, uh, challenges stream just before the game went uh, live proper. It was still in that uh, early access window for uh, deluxe members, and we did uh, we did a race here at, at Spa, or well, one of the challenges at Spa, and we just saw some comical, you know, hilariously stupid glitching through the pit lane. I wonder if we'll see that again here tonight. All right, send the drivers out. Should have sent Russell out first, but never mind. Let's hope that these changes will get our cars, if not at 100%, then certainly as close to it as we can, because after we do sprint quality, the car will be locked in Park Ferme, and the only thing we'll be able to change is the front wing. And uh, unfortunately, just changing the front wing doesn't do just the little change that you would hope it actually changes quite a lot on the car uh, and can really throw the whole balance off just giving the wing a click one way or the other okay. uh, surface temps are low all round because it might move the front wing into the right position but it will also then potentially move everything else out of the right position We've got a yellow flag here. Balance check. Spin from Norris. Oh, we've got an optimal there for Hamilton. That is encouraging. Oh, that's a bad spin. Why have I sent it? Just kept it out the wall. Man, that will have damaged his tyres a little bit. Uh, 97. It's close. It's not quite there, but it's damn close. And that's what I was looking for. All right, what about Russell? Oh, 57, that's bad. That's really bad. Good stuff. That was very good. Hey. Oh, we need to make wholesale changes right now. Uh, because... 
That's going to be really bad going into the Grand Prix. Okay, so it is a nine on the uh, the rear wing. Uh, it's a nine, a three point five, a nine, a two eight on the roll bar. It's going to be a three seven, not a two eight. Uh, so this is going to be a, a wing it and see what happens setup. I don't have this in the book. That needs to change substantially. Uh, that is going to need to change as well. Uh, I think... I think that might be it. Or, again, close. We're just going to have to throw him into quality like this and, and see what happens. We'll send him back out and try and get a little bit of feedback if we're lucky might get a, one bit of feedback for the uh the flag drops but it's unlikely i have time for one lap maybe two i'm not even gonna have time for one lap he'll get out and do a warm-up lap and, and that'll be it uh we'll send him in out we'll send him out anyway might as well and let's have a look at Hamilton okay the cornering is off so if we go that way we can then pull that back hmm Let's try that. Yeah, you take the checkered flag. So yeah, the reason I sent Russell out was we get the uh, the warm up lap and then he crosses the line, the flag has already dropped, and then he gets an in lap back to the garage. And there's a chance we might get a bit of feedback. Uh, probably didn't, but our driver's set up rating confidence is low right now but assuming that the setup changes that we've just made work then they'll both be much qualifying better. is coming up and we're close now to finding out how the drivers will line up on the grid for the sprint in this session drivers will be fighting for grid positions in the weekend sprint race only the fastest 10 will make it to q3 where they're in with a chance of taking pole now Karun. How do you think Joe Guan Yu will be as he heads into this session? Looking at the lap times, we saw a real lack of pace from them in practice. They never looked quite comfortable with the setup, and they'll need to try something new for qualifying if they want to get past Q1. So stay with us, folks. It's sure to be a good one. Okay. So I'm not worried about the car confidence, not yet, because that's going to change as soon as they do one lap. Uh, got to trust that the setup we've got here is correct. I'm just going to take a screenshot of the values, because it's the last chance we get to see those values, uh, just in case it does actually work and we do go 100, so I can then add it to the book later. Uh, let's see, we want just the one flying lap in the first session. That should be all we need to get through. Uh, we do need to swap out these parts. So we're going to go brand new engine, which has been sat there waiting to be used. Uh, we're going to go with the brand new, freshly purchased, penalty uh, inspiring new ERS unit. And change the gearbox as well. There we go. Those two, are, uh, two gearboxes in George's car should last the rest of the season, assuming he doesn't have a shunt. And, and damage, uh, and damage is one of them. Uh, as for Lewis, uh, brand new engine, and uh, we'll go with a brand new ERS unit to get that out of the way. Uh, might not actually run them in the race, but we'll certainly run them in qualifying to trigger the penalty. And for gearbox, I'm gonna go with this 
gearbox because at the moment I can't buy a new gearbox because we haven't run this one yet. So we'll do Q1 with this gearbox and then Q2 we'll put a new gearbox in uh, again to trigger the penalty. Uh, and then uh, and then we'll have that new gearbox as well for, for Lewis that he needs to get him through the rest of the season. Uh, just the one flying lap for Lewis as well. Let's put him on that set of tyres there just to keep things nice and tight and neat. I do have the OCD like that. I like to take my tyres in a very structured order rather than just higgledy-piggledy. Uh, and let's send them to the track. Let's see what we do. It's uh, just setting a time to get us through. It doesn't need to be uh, a stonking fast time. So I'm not worried about doing a second lap unless we get held up badly with traffic. And so far, looks like Hamilton got through okay. Might be slightly so slower. Yeah, we will box box end of this lap. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably acceptable. So keep that delta tight. So box, we did box. get held up a little bit, oh, but it can't. shouldn't be bad enough that we'll force him to run again. Let's see what happens as the rest of the grid starts setting some times. I am going to prep the car just in case I do need to go back out again. There we go. And looking at the times, yeah, I don't think we need to send Hamilton out again. I I'm happy with that. Really slow left rock on, he must have hit something. He has snuck through now, but he's been knocked out. So Ocon is out. That's going to be a big blow for him. Uh, he's been consistently chipping away and scoring points in the last few races. Might not happen this time. Although the sprint is what sets the grid for qualifying uh, for the race rather than this qualifying session. This sets the grid for the qualifying it's, uh, for the sprint itself. Uh, they can see we've got penalties for both of our drivers. Sites also taking penalty. Uh, Yuki has a penalty as well. Uh, that is left over from the crash yesterday at Hungar uh, Ring, I believe. Uh, same with Sainz as well, I think. Oh no, it was Stroll who had the penalty, wasn't it? Okay, it'd be interesting whether it gives Stroll his penalty here. Uh, let's go ahead now and go to have a look, actually. Yeah, 100%, beautiful. So, uh, before I forget, let me pull up that screenshot that I just took a moment ago. There we go. So, uh, spa, spa, spa. There it is. So we've got 3 .0, 10 .0, 5 .5, uh, minus 3 .1, and a zero. There we go. As always, keeping a notebook every time I get a 100% setup, it goes in that book so that we have that available for the following season. Uh, just like they do in real life. You know, they uh, obviously go with previous years and, and setup data and simulation setup data. My notebook is the equivalent. 97% uh, for George. We didn't quite get it right, uh, but just changing the front wing now is going to throw out too much, as you can see. 
it's going to push the uh, the traction out of the window. It's going to push the braking stability out the front of the window and the front wing out of the window just to get the cornering in the right place. So that would do more harm than good. So, yeah, at least we've got one extra setup in the book. I only go with the 100% setups. So that 97 will not get recorded. Uh, ba -ba -ba. We're going to go with the same tyres. And let's have a look. I'm going to switch back to the uh, other ERS units. Now that we've triggered the penalty, we don't need to run it any further. And... I forget to, I forgot to put the good engine in. Okay, let's go with that ERS unit. Now that we've triggered the penalty, and let's buy and run a new gearbox for Lewis. There we go. Right. Uh, we're going to go two laps in this session because it's more important to make sure we get through uh, in this session. Especially with Lewis going to be starting at the back of the grid. He's going to have a 20 place penalty. Just the 10 place penalty for George. Well, for those of you who are wondering, you see the little, uh, sort of like the pink on this car. Uh, I assume it's pink on all the others. And you see those little lights at the top of the air intake behind the driver's head. Let's just focus on the uh, If you're wondering what those are for, those are ERS lights. Um, when the car is stationary, uh, they will be green. And basically, it's just... Uh, it's, uh, it's a danger marker for... Um, for pit crew and emergency personnel, anyone who needs to touch the car. If the lights aren't green, there is a risk that there is still circ uh, current circulating through the car um, from the ERS unit. So when they pull into the pits, you'll see those lights will be green uh, and that's when it's safe for mechanics to touch the car. It's uh, a nice little attention to detail that uh, they put in the game. So, first lap is a 141.3, and, ooh, that's slow. Must have had a bit of traffic. Let's see what we do on the second lap. We've got a, a little uh, cool-down lap here. Just take a little bit of temp out the tyres, save a little bit of fuel, and uh, rebuild the battery a little bit.
so that's currently P4. Yeah, we're happy with that. Currently P5. So just confirming the boxing and back into the garage. Yep.
colours, red flag. of it. Cover. So, once again, we run the risk of traffic. It's always really hard to predict exactly when the, tra when the AI is going to go out. Especially when you throw a red flag into the mix as well. Um, I don't know if I've gone too early. But it's better to go too early than too late. And only have time for one lap. Interestingly, we do get a little bit of frame judder there. I mean, it's not as pronounced as it was last year, and I have noticed as well, having played on the PS4 nice. version all the way through yeah. a full season, Abu Dhabi, remarkably smooth. Uh, that was a horrible mess in terms of frame rates last time round, and this time round, it, well, again, it's only on the PS4 version I've got that far so far, but much smoother. It'll be interesting to see if that holds true on the PS5 when we get there as well. So these are our bank collapse. Hopefully the times will be competitive enough in case we can't improve on the second lap. But these are going to be just setting a baseline level of confidence for us to work from, which isn't great at the moment. Absolutely zero idea. No, oh, I've got traffic. I've got Perez in the way. Get out of the way, Checo. Oh, that's going to screw up Russell's lap. And now we've got Max in the way as well as we go towards Puon. Uh, sorry, Blanchimont. Here comes Hamilton. Oh, he gets Perez at Blanchimont. Oh, God, that's going to screw up Hamilton's lap as well. So neither of these are going to be particularly fast times. Russell are 141.7, it's not competitive. And Hamilton's is even worse. Now we've got a warm-up lap and then we get to go again. So at least we've got enough time, but there is every chance that we're going to hit traffic on our second flying lap as well. And those Red Bulls are going to, we're going to trip over them again. Oh, Russell was actually relatively competitive. Just two tenths off Sainz. Okay, I was not expecting that. Confidence level's not great. 
would have been nice to have them higher than that, but uh, like I said, we just didn't have the time. Ironically, with that red flag, I would have had time <laughs> to do a lap on crap tyres to build a base level of confidence and then come out and do this on the restart, but you can't predict a red flag, unfortunately. speed them up while we wait for them to uh, finish their cool down lap and go again we'll ride on board with Hamilton for the second lap and so it's all clear good to go all right so the Red Bulls are halfway down the camel straight right now we're gonna catch them Hopefully it won't be too bad. Hopefully we get them in a place where we can pass them without them getting in the way. Alright, Russell's up. And so is Lewis. No purple sectors. Little lift through no name. Flat through Puon. Russell's coming up to uh, Perez at Stavolo 2. And he will have got through there without any drama. Both drivers up in the middle sector. Can we get past before Blanchimont? Yes, we can. So that's going to be a safe lap for Russell. He's not going to get held up. What about Lewis? Oh, we're going to get him at the bus stop. They're going to dive into the pits. Hopefully that hasn't held up Lewis. Russell has improved slightly, I think, maybe. Hamilton improves significantly, but he's still so not people. quick enough. And we are slower than I thought we were going to be. Oh. I want to improve my qualifying position. Try running two straight flying laps. You run out of battery doing that. I've tried it. This is actually the better way. Until they fix the tyre issue. Um, I mean, if you want to really get into it and micromanage, you can really push the tyres on the warm-up lap and just do a single lap. But, yeah, you run out of battery on the second flying lap. If you don't do a cool-down lap between. And on a circuit like this, where you need that acceleration, yeah, it's not a risk that's worth taking, I don't think. So, penalties for Sainz, both of our drivers, and Yuki Tsunoda. It's not showing a penalty for Lance Stroll, who uh, caused a collision and took out Sainz in the previous Grand Prix. Has it given it to Sainz instead? I wonder if it's given it to Sainz or if Sainz is running new components. Uh, let's have a look at data view. Science is running a new ERS. Oh, wow. Look at that. He's running a 68% engine and a worn gearbox, and he still went faster than we did with, you know, brand new gearbox, brand new engines in both cars. That is... Ugh. Yeah, that's brought me down to, to earth with a bit of a, a bump. Oh, we've got a wet practice too. Right, uh, so we want to protect the uh, the parts for this session for obvious reasons. We don't want to uh, burn them out. 
unnecessarily. So let's throw in an older engine again and an older gearbox. Uh, my chat has crashed again. There we go. Reload. Uh, we're going to go with potentially a full run. Depends what the weather's going to do in this session. Uh, again, I can't improve the setup because we're still locked in Park Ferme, so all I can do is change the front wing, which will make the car worse. So 97% is as good as it's going to get, but it's still pretty good. Uh, ERS is fine. Gearbox, let's go with that gearbox. There we go. And again, we want to try and run for the entire hour if we can, depending on the weather. And we're not going to be able to. Okay, well, we'll at least get some running in. And then we'll uh, bolt on a set of hards and uh, run the rest of the session as soon as the rain stops. is uh, starting to uh, ease off. Water level is starting to drop. Got about seven, eight minutes more before it'll be dry. On the old game, I could have just kept those inters on for the rest of the session and they would probably have lasted. This time, they won't. When the inters start overheating on a dry track, they degrade insanely quickly. run a few laps just so you can see watch as the temperatures go up watch how quickly no rain so circuits all clear that tire wear starts to uh, increase Let's call them in. We'll bolt on hards for the remaining 30 minutes. We'll uh, take a bit of fuel out because they are a bit too heavy now. We don't want them running 30 laps. We'll get them running. 17 will be more than enough. And there we go. So it's just about building up that track knowledge now. There's nothing else we can do.
And as with last year, it takes 10 to 15 minutes before the driver's uh, track knowledge curve starts to you know, ramp up and start gaining at a faster rate. This is why if we do in, find ourselves in a situation where it rains and then stops with about 15 minutes left, I always leave the inters on. Just let them burn the inters to, to, uh, to a toast. Unless I really need to keep the inters in good condition because I haven't got many sets left. Um, because for that remaining 10-15 minutes they're running on inters, they're usually earning track knowledge at a much higher rate than if they were to pit and then come back in. Uh, go back out on uh, fresh dry tyres. And you can see that there. You can see how we've got those flattened areas at the start of each of those two splits. At the start of the session till about 15 minutes in and then again from half past through till about quarter two. Just keep them out for an extra lap. Even though the flag's about to fall, so we have it's just a little bit more track knowledge that they can gain on the way back to the pits. There we go. Let's see what we've got them up to. 84 and 91. That's not bad. So we've got them into the 90s for their uh, driver prep. Now it's time for the sprints. We're back and the action is set to get even better today as the drivers go racing in the sprint. The sprint kicks off the racing action for the weekend, a 100 kilometer battle to set the grid for the Grand Prix. It's not only the starting grid decided here though, the top finishers in the sprint have the chance to score crucial championship points. Well teams will need to be clever, there's no time to relax. It's the sprint around Spa. All right, have we got wet weather in the sprint? Predictor weather is cloudy, so potentially not. Uh, in terms of tyres, the softs are three seconds quicker over the 15 laps. Uh, we do want to put those uh, best engines back in and change the gearboxes as well. And I'm going to take an extra lap of fuel here for both cars. I normally run them light, but I don't want a fuel save in a sprint. I'd rather just have a little bit of extra fuel just to push really hard um, for extended periods of time. We'll do the complete opposite when we get to the main race. We will uh, take a few laps of fuel out. We won't go crazy because we've still got positions to make up thanks to our penalties. It certainly won't be anything like it was last night where we took like seven kilos out. And we want to go aggressive off the line. Uh, there we go. And let's go sprint. 15 long and challenging laps await the drivers in today's sprint here at Spa. And once the lights go out here at Spa, the attention will shift to the first corner, a turn that has seen its fair share of dramatic incidents over the years. A sprint victory and points are for grabs right here. So, 12th place for Russell, 20th place for Lewis. This is all about uh, trying to gain as many places as possible for the main race. And it's lights out, and away we go. And uh, we're running third and fifth. Uh, what? Unless it's going to. Oh, don't tell me it's going to demote us in the main race and not the sprint. 
Ah, I think that's what it's going to do. Well, this is glitched. They might have glitched. All right, well, we'll see what happens. Perez all over the back of us. It's not giving Sainz his penalty either. He's still between the two of us. Although Yuki is at the back. Mind you, he's seven and eight seconds off, so he might have he might have had a wobble. And he's dropping back. Yeah, he must have damage. He's on inters. Oh, 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 I've just seen the weather. Uh, okay. I didn't even think about checking the weather. it does go into wet weather it's not going to be for long I don't think oh Hamilton got past Sainz I missed it too busy looking at the weather in Yuki is he going to give us the replay of that uh, no I guess it isn't the hit we've dropped sights and he's going to act as a nice little buffer to Perez let's tell Hamilton to go low on overtakes I know we're telling him not to try and overtake Russell but Every now and again, they still do pull alongside and then have to lift dramatically when you do that. So look after the car. I like to double it up and tell them to not try overtaking at all or as little as possible as well. see if we can get back onto the back of uh, Alonso who is potentially going to get dropped by Verstappen we might actually lose the DRS in a lap or two's time if the track does officially tick over to, uh, to damp and I think this is probably as, as fast as we can go going to be worth making that switch to Inters. I think if it is wet enough for Inters, it's only going to be for a lap or two, and then it's going to start drying up again. Okay, so the front two are boxing. Okay, so we're at the mercy of our radar now, which is still at its crap level. So, yeah, this could go horribly wrong. Sights from nowhere. 
just took the pair of us. Oh, wow. Oh, he's tucked in behind him, which means he's going to get the DRS. Uh, nice job. How are we only... How are we only eight seconds ahead of the snapping? Why not let Lewis through? Uh, because I want Ru Russell to gain as many places as possible. It doesn't matter how many places Lewis gains. Uh, if it didn't apply the penalty here, it's going to apply it in the main race. And it's a 20-place penalty. So he's starting at the back regardless. Russell's only got a 10-place penalty. So the higher he finishes this Grand Prix, the less far down the order he's going to fall in the main race. I'm staying out. No sights in the pit lane. At the very least, I can try and get Hamilton to hold everybody up. I've just got to hope that it dries up quickly. Um, and that we don't. We're going to lose time staying out these conditions are, are bad for slicks very bad for slicks like catastrophic to our pace bad but is, do we lose more time boxing than we do staying out that's the gamble if I can hold track position throw Lewis into defensive mode try and build enough of a gap at the front uh, we've got a yellow flag is it serious? no it's just a lock up now we can see what happened Yo Guan Yu is the focus here nothing wrong so far very heavy on the brakes. Now they did leave it very late. You can see how quickly Verstappen's caught us on this lap. Once it gets above 0.8 inches are faster than slicks. Once it gets above one, Slicks are awful, truly awful, as you can see. <laughs> right, uh, Hamilton always defends. Now that's not going to last very long. Use the overtake. There's going to be no uh, DRS. Got every chance here. Because the track is now officially damp. But if we can at least hold up Alonso. Which we're doing so far. Uh, 
can we hang on for the track to dry up? Is the track going to dry up? I'm looking at this and now I'm thinking it's not. Oh, okay. I, we might have completely screwed ourselves here. With a yellow flag. It's not a VSC. Yeah, yellow. Yeah, copy. <laughs> Show so struggling again. Happened. Now, this was the Alfa Romeo. Things were going smoothly. And the car just locks. They were just unable to do much about it. And now we're going to lose a lot of time. We've got Sainz and Stroll in the mix here as well now. Lewis doing a mighty job of defending here. Looks like it might potentially ease up a little bit. If it does, we're going to be sprinting like crazy. Do what you can. Sides got through. I should have boxed. I should have gone for the inters. Benefit of hindsight. I'm still frustrating the crap out of Alonso, and that brings a smile to my face. <laughs> Thinking back to how Alonso did this to Hamilton at Monaco a couple of years ago. And then again at Hungary. Um, holding him back when he was uh, trying to hunt down Ocon. It's a little bit of payback for, for Lewis there. Right, if I've judged that right, we should get the DRS here. Yes, we did. Excellent. Now we're back into territory where the uh, the dries are going to be competitive again. So, 2.7 seconds behind Sainz. Russell closing on Verstappen. Right, the real question now is, do I just commit and stay like this, or do I go, OK, I've got a small window, I'll sprint for another lap and then box for Inters. And looking at the schedule, I think the latter. I sprint for the next lap and then box. Let's go all in with everything I've got. Use up the last little window of, of opportunity we've got with these softs.
couldn't get close enough with either of our drivers to use DRS on this lap, which is unfortunate, but... Not really a lot we can do about that. I would have thought about keeping them out, but it looks like it's going to be quite a nasty spike of water towards the end and our pace will just fall off a cliff to the point where we will lose a lot of places. I, there's no way we'd be able to hang on to where we are in those conditions. You can see the water level starting to creep back up again. just as we got our drivers onto the back of the cars we're chasing as well. Watch the uh, the light under the T-bar. It should go green. You can see it. Oh, his hand's in the way. You can't see it. Ah, that's a slow stop. Clean stop for Lewis, but that is not good. All right, we're going to be out behind Perez. We will still get DRS. on this lap. We're not close enough. So, sixth and eighth. Uh, it's not horrible. It could have been worse, considering <laughs> the condition we put ourselves in by staying out. I, I didn't think the water level would actually get as high as it did and stay that high for as long as it did and then go back up again. It's the, the, the perils of not having a great weather center. I'm just going to go full bore on these tires for the remaining five and a half laps. No more DRS, that's been deactivated again. But hopefully we can get Russell back in front of Perez. And then maybe, if we're lucky, hunt down Stroll and Alonso. Two and a half seconds or so. Brand new tyres, they're now up to temperature. Fuel to burn as well. Ready on that. And Hamilton's caught up to the back of Magnuson. This should be a, a quicker overtake. Oh god damn it Russell, I'm so sick of hearing you say that. <laughs> Russell's through. He got him. Got him in Stavolo too. And he's a happy bunny. Yeah, don't 
sweat it, Lewis. Don't sweat it. We've got the uh, the time and the pace by the look of it to catch up to Stroll. Hamilton should get through. Yeah, he does. Gets it up the inside. Once again, we didn't get a replay of Russell's overtake. It's a shame, I'd have liked to have seen that. Not sure if Hamilton's got enough pace to catch up to Perez. Not with three and a half laps to go. Maybe. There is Hamilton, just coming into shot through no name. He's already pulled out nearly two seconds on Magnussen since the source. And Russell's already on the back of Stroll. He could get back up into third place again. If we can get past Stroll quickly, that leaves us a chance to have a real good run at the back of Alonso here. Tires are hot. But I don't care. Yeah, Hamilton's less than three seconds behind. I think Hamilton's got the pace to get past Perez. Three laps to go. Oh, Russell couldn't quite squeeze it through. Stroll shut the door quite aggressively there. Into Russell vision. Don't be a VSC. Yep. Now the Alpha Tauri involved here. All good at this point. And there goes the steering. By that point, it was just too late. Oh, he's going to get him at Stavlo again. that battery coming out of the bus stop. Keep saving Hamilton's, he's not quite close enough to Perez yet. Is he going to try and go around the outside? Two laps to go. No. All right, big acceleration down here. Another yellow flag. It's all spun. Gasly on turn one. Alonso sets the fastest lap. He's pushing like crazy to try and open up a gap to Stroll. Stroll is pushing as well because he's kind of staying with Alonso.
Perez might be pushing as well because we're not as close as we could or should be. Use the overtake. Understood. All right, let's get him into Stavlo if we can. Left and right, trying to find a way through. I've got no battery left. Got enough for one lunge, really. Into La Source and then a lunge into Eau Rouge. From whatever I earn in this corner here. Nothing left to give Russell. He's got everything. Come on, go around the outside at Puyol. That'll be uh, brave. And still unable to find his way past Perez as well. He has still got a little bit of battery left. He's got a chance coming out of Stavlo too. Couldn't make it. Maybe a lunge. Max Verstappen over the finish line. Ah, it's winner. a what could have been race. If we'd boxed for inters so and at the same time as the rest of the grid, we could have done better. I mean, fifth and seventh, considering what, <laughs> what kind of disaster we have with strategy, that's not bad. But that means 15th and last in the Grand Prix. That's P7. Did show some race, decent pace in the Grand Prix, though. In the sprint. That, that bodes well. And, and certainly a good enough result for now. Oh, there we go. Stroll's penalty is now showing. So he'll get a three place penalty. The time has come to fight it out. It's race day. Motor car racing didn't have the best of starts at Spa Francorchamps. Only one driver registered for the very first car race back in 1921, so a motorbike race replaced it instead. Times have changed, and now Spa is a solid fixture on the F1 calendar. Now, Karun, based on what we've seen of Max Verstappen this weekend, how do you think he's going to be feeling today? Oh, there's no doubt they'll be delighted to be at the front of the grid. It's a well-deserved pole position and a great opportunity to bring home the silverware. Well, this may well be another Belgian Grand Prix for the ages. So stick around and find out how it all ends. OK, it's going to be dry today. There's those penalties. We've got 44 laps ahead of us here in Spa. Huh? What? We get ready for the Belgian Grand Prix. Why didn't you give me the opportunity to set my strategy? Here's a determined what? science lining up on the grid. Get ready. 
It's the Belgian Grand Prix. Okay, we're going to reload because it didn't give me the chance to do anything with strategy. I have no idea what even tyres I'm even starting on. Uh, so let's reload the auto save to the beginning of the race again. There we go. It skipped this whole section. I did wonder if there was something wrong because it did say, it, it did play the music um, out of position at the start of that little intro for the race itself. So we're looking at a, a strategy kind of a bit like that. 18.11 is the best I can get on a two-stop. I think the one-stop is going to be the better strategy. Just got to be careful we don't burn out the tyres. take two laps of fuel. And... I'm not going to push Lewis at the start. I am going to push Russell though. ahead of us here in Spa as we get ready for the Belgian Grand Prix. This race should be a good chance to see what Valtteri Bottas can manage. For P17, you know, they could try and be clever here, and then who knows what they could manage. And the time has come. Let's go racing. You can hear the excitement in the crowd here at the Belgian Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. Okay, so the front three all on uh, mediums as well. Okay, let's go for it. Trying to hold off using the battery for the first lap or two. Try and gain the advantage over the field. I'm hoping the car's pace will be enough to stay in DRS range. And then we'll activate the uh, the battery probably after the source on lap two. Just got to be careful we don't get caught up in an incident with uh, one of these uh, drivers down the bottom end of the grid.
So DRS is going to kick in next lap, and the uh, AI should be out of battery by next lap as well. We'll still have a lap's worth, just under a lap's worth of battery left. So hopefully that'll uh, enable us to uh, gain a couple of positions. And if we can gain a position or two before the end of the lap as well, then that'll just be a nice little bonus. Got to think about uh, going into fuel saving at some point. So let's start looking for the telltale blinking red lights. DRS enabled. There we go. Pace is still good, let's just keep it up. And there you see no battery for the Alpha Tauri compared to battery for us. Huge acceleration gain. And with the DRS wide open, it is the best DRS on the grid. And we're straight through. Albon has been passed as well. Let's uh, drop the tires and the fuel. Both of the Alpha Romeos fighting each other, which doesn't help us. Can we get Joe into the bus stop? That little look, couldn't quite get him. Gonna go around the outside of Hulkenberg here with Russell. This is potentially gonna leave us vulnerable on the Camel Straight. Got enough pace to carry us through. It's going to top up mode for Russell now. Hamilton is about to get Joe. And then move complete. I'm going to put him into harvest mode. Just charge the pack. Because he is fighting slower traffic and Russell still needs to catch up onto the back of Sainz. He's stuck behind Piastri. Piastri up in eighth place. I don't think he's going to stay there. Peak confidence now for George. And uh, a little bit lower for Russell. No, sorry, for Hamilton. Just having a look at Bottas. It's going to be a little bit slower progress for, the, for Lewis. Oh, 
should be able to get past uh, Bottas nicely here. Come on, pull out, pull out. Ah, he's staying tucked up because he's in top up. Sorry, in harvest. Try and get him here into Pool. Oh, it's close. Nearly lost the front wing there by the look of it. Right. Science has dropped Piastri. Piastri is going to be easy pickings here for George. It's just a question of where the move happens. Lewis has still not got past. I just have to think about getting the pack back up. And there we go, that's Russell going around the outside of Piastri. Happy to start reducing that management. Lewis gets the move done. Time to start hunting down Sergeant. Russell absolutely maxed on his confidence right now. He should catch the Ferrari very quickly, hopefully. Hamilton has dropped Bottas, despite giving up DRS down the Camel Straight, he's still flying in comparison. There's the gap already. just gone. But Stroll is on those uh, soft tyres, so he is going to be slow in the second half of the race. Russell now clear of Piastri. Hamilton into the back of Sargent. Should hopefully get a move done. This lap. I thought he was going to get him under braking for a second then. Let's try and find an opening. Uh, good defending from Sergeant there. Closing the door. Russell has now caught up. If we could just drop back a bit. Disappointed to have not made better progress with Lewis after eight laps.
Oh, come on, Lewis. Just maximise that car, call. Keep giving you more power and you keep doing nothing with it. Evening, Anthony. There we go, finally. A lunge. Uh, it's not what happened to Hamilton. Uh, both drivers had penalties uh, for new parts. So, uh, 10 place penalty for Russell, 20 place for Lewis. And right, Stroll has locked up. That five. is uh, very good because oh, and the car that's going to do some serious damage up, to his tyre. Yeah, I took. Uh, oh, we've got a crash. We missed it and was looking at the wrong car. Crash. That happened right in front of Hamilton. At the end of the Camel Straight. I just saw the tyre uh, life just start plummeting. So that's two less cars that we have to worry about for Lewis to get past. That's good. Like that. And that'll be a penalty for Sergeant. Looks like we managed to stay in range this time. Last time I went into uh, harvest mode, we dropped. <laughs> we dropped almost a second. <laughs> Charge the pack. There we go. Right. Uh, let's see. We're doing 148 fours with Hamilton at the moment while we're fuel saving that's not too bad it's not stellar lap time but it is quicker than most of the cars we're chasing
All right, so Magnussen should be uh, vulnerable for an easy DRS overtake next lap. Assuming he doesn't get back past Sainz here. Sainz is now vulnerable to a counter-attack. Looks like Sainz has got him covered off. One forty six seven for Lewis on that last lap. That was a lap where he wasn't pushing at all. Fuel saving. That was the quickest of anybody on the last lap. And over two seconds faster than Hulkenberg. He'll be on him very soon. There he is. Hulkenberg and Piastri. Next two up for Lewis. Push and hold, overtake. If we can get a good launch here, we should hopefully be able to get side by side. Not quite. Can we get alongside? Yes, we can. Excellent stuff. That'll be the move done. So we're past Magnussen. Up to 8th. Back to almost maxed out peak confidence as well. I think it's just a fraction under. Pretty close though. Let's get Hamilton onto the back of sights. Sorry, uh, Russell onto the back of sights quickly. And then we'll uh, try and get sights down the camel straight as well. And then we can go after Ocon and Leclerc. I deliberately slammed on the anchors there so that uh, we uh, didn't give up the DRS. Unfortunately, we lost a little bit more ground than I was expecting to the Ferrari to the point where we couldn't actually then capitalize on that. But at least Sainz didn't get the DRS, so we've got to get Sainz now because he will be back in range of Ocon on the next lap. Just stay close to him. Go on up the inside at Puon. Nope. has got past Piastri it's all over the back of uh, Hulkenberg right now and we've got a yellow flag oh it's a VSC okay, okay. let's uh, calm down the tyres let's go into fuel saving mode that really helps us 
Already in fuel save, uh, already in harvest. What happened? Now, who is that? Now, that looks like Lando Norris. Ah, Lando. I was hoping it was going to be Red Bulls for a moment then. Oh, it's a big smash. A guy turning into me. Makes sense. <laughs> Did so much it's turn into like you as drove through you there. <laughs> Alright, it's too early for us to uh, to stop. Although with Hamilton, I might. I might convert. Four seconds slower, but he's going to save that time and more pitting under a VSC. He's going to faster compound the tyres, better grip. It's going to be much easier to make the overtakes. We're going to do it. We're going to box Lewis. Uh, we might get out in front of uh, De Vries here. Clean stop. It's going to 2.4. There goes De Vries. Okay, so we didn't quite get out in front of De Vries, but we are in front of everybody else. We're comfortably going to be clear of Joe. And we almost got out in front of De Vries. It was close. Very close. And now we're going to have uh, very fast tyres. About two seconds off the back of Sainz. When that's because of uh, the VSC, that'll actually be less than that. Be maybe one and a half seconds, I think. I don't think it's worth doing this, the same thing with Russell. We'll keep him out. His tyres are still in good shape, he's got track position, he's not having to fight through a lot of slower cars. Unlike Lewis who is, uh, you know, still way out of position. Green flag drops. Hamilton will be blisteringly quick pushing those tyres. VSC ending. Coming. Just close up. And think about left lifting coast. Okay. DRS has been enabled. gave it the DRS but we should be able to hold him back
Oh, we actually got the DRS. I didn't think we would. Okay, bonus. All right, uh, seven seconds to Albon. Uh, Russell away from Magnussen already, closing in on the back of Sainz. He's probably also pushing as well. Still in peak confidence for George. Excellent. If we could just drop back a bit. Right, this is the crucial run. Couldn't get alongside through O'Rouge. Rouge. Should get him here though. Should get him here, but he's not going to. He's not going to pull out. He's going to stay where he is. Ah. Lewis, meanwhile, absolutely flying. Four seconds. He pulled out four seconds to De Vries in one lap. Russell, meanwhile, staying tucked up behind Sainz, who is pushing because he's closing the gap to his teammate. There's Stroll behind us on those brand new mediums. Gasly sets the fastest lap of 145.1. Let's see what Lewis does. 144.8. Make sure keep these tyres in good nick. Come on, George. He's got battery. Use it, use it, use it. It's just frustrating. Russell at the moment. Is this an opportunity? No. He's still outside the DRS range here. Does that mean we can have a go at La Source? Yes, we can. Can we get a good enough launch to get a run at Leclerc? Yes, we can. And we got back into peak confidence with that overtake. Oh, it's going to be close. Nice we one. should just get the DRS. Now, we should be able to take a look here. It was George Russell involved. Now you just see the lunge. There's the opening. And 
fifth place after that. All right, DRS is wide open. Just making sure I don't get dropped. As soon as we come out of Stavolo 2, I'm going to turn this into uh, top-up mode. I might get harvest, actually. That no, top-up safer. There we go. Charge the pack. Lewis on the back of Hulkenberg. Hockenberg overtake us? No. He must have just been a bit further ahead and been passed and dropped by Albon. Just push. Oh, who's going to get the DRS? I think it might be Leclerc. Nice it was. Currently P4. But we have the pace to hold him back. Good stuff. Right. Good progress for Russell. Hamilton clear of the uh, Hulkenberg. You know, I'll leave the tyres sure in that, that mode again. Fall off a cliff on that tire. So you can pick up the pace. Try and do a bit of fuel saving at the same time. Hamilton into peak confidence now. Excellent stuff. Both our drivers looking very, very purple. Which is good. That's what we want. Purple in the middle sector for Lewis now. It's not even pushing. Not really. And Russell is definitely lapping faster than everybody except for Snappen. And Hamilton on 144.9. Whoa, that's a quick lap. That's a. Are we pushing? No, we're not. Not really. We've got tied up a little bit, but. Wow, 144.9. That is fast. Another yellow flag. Yellow. So Yuki drops it on the... Uh, oh, that's a weird way to spin out. I'm sorry. That's a broken front wing and potential suspension and slash chassis damage as well. From the Take a look at tyre wear. It's not too bad. When are we due to stop? Lap 25. Push and hold, overtake. Let's see if I can break away from Leclerc now. And happy to pick up the pushing level.
just work on getting that tank back up. And we can drop the lift to coast for now, we'll pick it up later. So Lewis didn't make the move because we had him in full harvest mode. That's good because it means we'll get DRS here on the camel and we should make the move comfortably here. Should, <laughs> but didn't. That Williams is pretty quick in a straight line, it would seem. Meanwhile, Russell now two seconds clear. Another yellow flag. Someone spun out. Yellow, yellow. Along the straight here. And then the car just goes. And Joe and says to Yuki, this to is how you spin out, control. coming out of a corner. seconds clear of the Ferraris. Excellent stuff. We can keep this pace going in the, the next stint on the softs. It's not inconceivable that we could catch Alonso and Perez. I don't think we've got enough pace and time to catch Verstappen. But I'd be happy with the podium. I'm delighted with the podium. You can do this. Use the overtake. Man, Stroll has got past the Ferraris now as well. Lewis just diving up the inside of Magnussen there. Like I said, when you get your drivers into peak, peak confidence like this, they can do magical things with the car. Aggressive defensive move from Albon, it's not going to be enough. Lewis is through. Yeah, we just want to grow this gap. 
get Russell to eat up the last of that tyre. Boxing in a lap and a bit. Meanwhile, Hamilton's pulled out another second and a half over Albon already. There's Magnussen boxing in the background. Just saw him pulling in there. So we are low on battery at the moment. Just need to make sure to keep these tyres in good nick. And just charge the pack. Closing down. Alonso by about half a second. A little bit more to Perez. Hamilton flying in the 144s. Although it'll be slow on this lap because he's got no battery left. Should still be able to catch Gasly by the end of the lap though. And Verstappen boxes, so that's going to be for softs. Looks like a little delay on release there. is going to get out before we even get there. Heading down the straight. I was looking at the wrong car. I was looking at Hamilton. Well, you can see the locker. Ah. Be mindful of the effect that that had on the tires. There's Verstappen coming out of the box. And that's going to let Stroll through. Oh, God, it's let everybody through. Jesus. Oh, that's ruined Russell's race. That's destroyed his confidence as well. Oh, shouldn't have pushed him that little bit harder. Should have just left him where he was. Ah, knackers. That's cost Russell about 13 seconds, that lockup. And I have to say, it's destroyed his confidence as well, which is the worst part of that. Gasly. It's a clean stop. Yeah, we should be clear on exit. Now this was at turn one. The opportunity's there. Very slow. That's that weird glitch we've seen in the pit lane, I Up think. That takes them to seventh place. Where a car will slow down dramatically when it's alongside a car that's boxing.
Gas is retaking the position again. Just because we're in harvest mode. Yeah, don't sweat it. Ah, uh, damn it. We'll get him back. Right, let's have a little rebuild lap for Russell. Just get those tyres up to temp, get some battery in the car, just get that fuel back down again, and then we can start to push him. Alonso into the box. One forty four two for Max. Sights in the box as well. In the box Lewis a lap or two earlier than planned. And just go hell for leather on this lap. It is a box box. In the box is there. So let's get after it. Gasly is pushing. We'd have breezed past him if he wasn't. Which might be a uh, potential in-lap for Gasly. stop again not particularly fast all right Russell should start setting personal best sectors soon get his confidence level up a bit. Right, let's see if we can actually get him onto the back of Lewis before Lewis starts Push hold, pushing okay. again. Get Lewis to drag him along until his confidence level gets up high enough. Coast. 143.9. We can break that with Hamilton quite comfortably, I think. Probably with Russell as well.
So head down. Yeah, we just need to make sure that uh, we don't fall off the cliff on that time. flag safety car would be really nice about that, that now don't know what that safety that yellow flag was for I don't see any obvious Slow car being lapped. I don't think anyone's been lapped yet. Not quite. Show's about to be lapped. One forty three one, that's a quick lap. Yeah, yellow. Uh, suspend for Bottas. going to try and pull Russell onto the back of Albon and then we're going to use Albon's DRS hopefully to try and sprint Lewis past and go for a fastest lap and that will hopefully allow Russell to get a nice easy overtake and get a confidence boost as well just need to make sure to keep these tyres in good nick just save a little bit more battery for Lewis introducing a bit of lifting coast a little bit more fuel Make sure Russell doesn't get dropped. Lewis's potential pace, even on equal settings like this, you know, if I had them both on the same pace push settings, Lewis's pace would be much faster because of the confidence level. Uh, so you can see, even with that little dip, he's still in peak. So his confidence, well, that's his stats there. Whereas if we take a look at George Russell's, yeah, nowhere near as nice. Use the overtake. Just close up. All right, there, Tony. Uh, Toby. Uh, what are my tips for designing the car? How many designs do I do per ATR period? I, I don't have a, uh, a set strategy of you must do this many designs per period. You know, it's. You look at where the car is weakest, you look at what your budget is, you know, how you know how much of a deficit you have in a particular part or area. Oh, we forced a mistake from Albon. We have another yellow flag. Okay, into medium confidence. It's not ideal, but it'll do. Let's get Russell on a charge as well. Uh, yeah, there's no there's no set 
strategy. It's you just look at where your car is weak. You look at you know um, which areas of the car specifically really need boosting, and you try and plan your upgrades accordingly to to plug that gap or you know focus in on that particular area. You know, it depends on, like I said, what your budget is, you know, how much funds you have available at the time, uh, how much of your cost cap you've eaten into already. Uh, cost cap is really aggressive this year compared to previous years. Yeah, you know, it's right to the previous game, you know, uh, and it's much easier to break the cost cap this time around. I went pretty gung-ho at the start with Mercedes and we're what round 13 and I probably got maybe 25, 26, 27 million left in my cost cap for the rest of the season. And if I have to take a, a pair of new engines, that's another 10 million of that gone. So you know, I've kind of got to the point where I've almost stopped development and I'm just focusing on research now because it's cheaper <laughs> um, and it still gives next year's car a bit of a boost even though it won't really do anything for us this year so we need a 300 meters lifting coast and just charge the pack Let's take a look at our pace. 143s, again, push laps. This next lap will be a bit more telling. Uh, but way faster than Gasly, faster than Ocon, faster than Sainz, Stroll. Probably going to be a bit slower than Leclerc. Faster than Max, but you know, Max is too far out of reach. We are a long way off as you can see, of the lead. But Stroll is catchable. Stroll's probably going to have to box again as well. Unless he really hangs out those tyres and they'll be really, really bad by the end of the Grand Prix, which means it'll be easy pickings. So, it's not all bad. Got rid of most of the negative modifiers for Russell there. Charge the pack. Copy. If I'd known as well going into this weekend that the penalties wouldn't be applied <laughs> for the sprint but for the actual for the main, I wouldn't have taken the penalties this weekend. I would have taken them probably at Zambor instead. Still hoping that we'll get a safety car. We've got brand new soft tyres for both of our drivers still. So uh, we've got the option to dive in and, and box. Hell, even if we get a VSC, if worst comes to worst, and it's just a couple of laps to go, I could box Russell, put on a set of softs, go for the fastest lap, and he would still come out ahead of Magnussen.
as things stand, like I said. If Stroll boxes, then he's going to be boxing relatively soon, I think. Same with Ocon, same with Gasly, and then they're going to be rapid. Stroll in particular is going to be rapid. Stroll might get the fastest lap if he does box. The Alpines won't have anywhere near that level of pace. You see, we have caught Gasly with Hamilton. Forty-four zero last lap. That's still quick. Still quack, uh, quacker. Still <laughs> quack, quack, quack. Still quicker than Science and Verstappen. Uh, than everyone but uh, Science and Verstappen in front of us. And considerably faster than the Alpines, as you can see. Two and a half seconds faster than Ocon there. Ah uh, well, welcome to the uh, welcome to the party. We stream minimum three races a week, and we always do them live like this. We don't speed up the race. We'll whiz through practice and bits of qualifying, but we always run the race in real time. Yeah, that's how I think the game should be should be enjoyed. Yeah, you know, rather than just sitting in in, uh, in that view at time sixteen and simulating straight through from practice one straight through to to qualifying. But that's just how I like to play. Not to look down on anyone who plays it in a different way it's just that's the way I prefer it go out of Stavlo got the move done I wonder if those medium runners are staying out you know would have thought they'd have boxed by now if they were going to. Just like with Lewis, didn't I? Uh, might not have the uh, the tire life now. Yeah, we just need to make sure that uh, we don't fall off the cliff on that tire. 
to drop those temps down. We'll get him go for it on the next lap. Sure, keep these tyres in good nick. What is my fastest lap with Lewis? 143.4. And what's the fastest lap? 143.1. Push and hold, overtake. Yeah, I agree. Let's push and get past him. Just keep the pressure on, you can do this. Get alongside so we get the clean run. Ah, not quite. Russell made it though. Russell's through. Now Hamilton's going to breeze through. And Russell got the DRS, which is what I was trying to do with Hamilton. I was trying to get him to uh, get alongside into Eau Rouge so we'd have a clean run up the hill through Radion and then open the DRS and just blitz away. Like Russell's just done to Gasly. Pulled out a second down the Kemmel straight there. You've got a week off. Hey, what are you planning on doing, Mr. Water? Yeah, 143.0, we just got the fastest lap. So it should be six laps. Russell's through. How are you doing, Reek? Is it Reek or Rick? Definitely closing on Leclerc. Sight's still stuck behind a slow stroll. Alonso's pace has gone a bit. And that's based on Perez's pace, which has dropped off. We're going to be on these guys almost immediately. There is some traffic. Maybe that's what's slowed a couple of them down, but... How far off are we? We are too far off Perez. But Stroll's up for grabs. Yeah, 
Joe out of the way. We've really been able to keep Lewis's confidence level really high throughout this uh, this feature race, which is what enabled him to come from the bottom of the grid all the way up to seventh. Russell was actually doing quite well until that lockup. His confidence has recovered a bit now. He's into very high confidence, but yeah, he lost so much time with that uh, that lockup that killed his chances of uh, of a podium. Fifth and eighth possible. Um, fourth is possible. I don't think Russell has got enough pace left in him to uh, catch the Ferraris. Especially since they're pushing a little bit more at the moment. He certainly doesn't have the tyres left to really go for it. It's only a couple of laps, but they're long laps. So if we can get Stroll, there's uh, science, there's no reason we can't get Stroll. We've got a yellow flag. So currently have a yellow flag. Probably. A crash from Magnussen, that does nothing to help us. Uh, you're thinking right, about a new career a after an absolute shocker. Uh, any ideas? Within a split uh. second, the impact's made. Well, they may have been keen to leave their mark. McLaren is a, tr is a, a tricky, sorry, uh, Mercedes is a you? tricky save as things currently stand. Uh, when the new patch drops in a week or two, uh, McLaren, sorry, Mercedes, will be a little bit easier because their board requirements will be third for the season, not second. Um, Use the overtake. Three laps remaining. I would say it might be worth just holding off. If you're going to do a new career, maybe hold off um, until the patch. It's only a week or two away. Uh, it will rebalance the starting objectives for some of the teams. Alfa Romeo, for example, their car is awful. Really, really bad. Um, but the team expects a seventh place finish, um, which is ridiculously tough. So uh, that's getting rebalanced. Uh, I think Alfa Tauri's might be getting rebalanced a little bit as well. Um, and of course, we'll have the uh, the add-on for uh, being able to switch careers, switch teams as well. So just charge that pack. That side did get strolled. Damn it! I was kind of hoping he wouldn't do that. I've got a Haas career going in the background um, just to try him out, you know, with the plan of I hired Jack Crawford as my reserve driver. This is basically the plan I had on the previous game, but I've got Jack Crawford as my reserve. And uh, the plan was to hire Logan Sargent at the end of the first season. Um, and then possibly promote Crawford at the end of the first season. But 
But Hulkenberg and Magnussen, if you can stop them from hitting people, which they tend to do a lot when they're AI controlled, <laughs> um, yeah, their car's actually pretty decent. I've had multiple points finishes already with them in just like the first six, seven races. At the end of the stream, I'll, uh, I'll load it up so you can have a quick look. I won't play anything, but just before I, I end the stream, I'll load that file up so you can have a, a, a little look-see. So let's get after it. Yeah, Russell's too far behind. It's all down to Lewis. on science it's going to be on him at the top of the camel uh, at the top of Radion here can we get him at the end of the camel ah not quite just think about lifting coast efficiency save that last little bit of battery for the end of the lap Too little, too late for George there, but we'll see what happens. Let's start pushing them. Come on. Max Verstappen over the finish line and today's winner. Too short a run to the line. Ah. So you take the flag. So it's P5. Good job today. And Russell's out of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for continuing to push this year. So Great recovery from Lewis. Gained 15 places in that race so there. The checkered flag. P8. Good race. Russell was looking on for a podium until the lockup. Just couldn't quite get Sainz. If, if Sainz had not been able to get past Stroll, we'd have had them both. As soon as he got through, he was going to be second and a half a lot faster. And no doubt, Verstappen fans will be celebrating the Dutchman's achievement. Six wins now in this season, they're not flagging. A mighty impressive victory. And there you have it. A smiley podium lineup at the Belgian Grand Prix. And as proceedings start to wind down here, what will Mercedes have made of this result, Karun? They did okay today, I'd say. I mean, we're talking about such a competitive field, and all things considered, the drivers did all right. That is that for this weekend's F1 action here in Belgium.
For the next round, Formula One won't be straying too far. We'll be heading to the dunes of Zandvoort and the lightning speed of the Dutch Grand Prix. So there we go. Uh, 15 places gained for Lewis. Fastest lap as well. A good recovery uh, considering he had the double penalty for a new ERS and the new gearbox. Uh, Carlos with his penalty recovered six places. George, 10 place penalty. Got himself up to fourth, was on for a potential podium and had the lockup. Still managed to finish in eighth. Not a bad recovery. The spin, I think the lockup dropped him down to what, 12th or 13th at the time. Uh, so not too bad for him. Decent race for Gasly. He recovered nicely. Ocon dropping a couple of places. But again, the Alpines are chipping away and scoring points. Uh, and then a bit of a shocker for Magnussen. Uh, Piastri was always going to go backwards. Uh, Norris's crash uh, took him out of contention for a, a point or two. In the driver standings, Max again, again starting to stretch that lead over Checo once again. As you can see, gap is now uh, 28 points. Uh, Carlos closing in on Charles in the battle for third. Lewis pulling away. No, not pulling away. Being caught by uh, Fernando Alonso again. Uh, George struggling to keep pace. Uh, Stroll with some points as well. Uh, the battle between the two Alpine teammates has put them dead pegging level again. And then it's just a huge gap for everybody else, as you can see. Uh, in the Constructors' Championship, a big, big points for Red Bull again. Uh, Ferrari didn't get great points, but unfortunately neither did we. So we couldn't capitalise on that. And Aston Martin outscoring us by 11. Uh, that's not good. They are going to be hunting us down again for third in the Championship. And as far as the pit stop times, once again... We had clean uh, stops, but not quick stops, so we don't make the uh, the top 10, so we don't get any points. Uh, Red Bull walking away with that at the moment. McLaren consistently quick, as were Ferrari uh, here today. Alpha Tauri can score points uh, when it comes to pit stops, but not really anywhere else. And Aston Martin overtake us now. Uh, yeah, we are not a quick pit crew at all. Um, it's a bit of a shame. Hopefully we can uh, get their levels up a bit. Completed our sponsor goals, so we get another 5 mil in the bank. That's good, we need the money. And we get our mid-season board review. So, uh, the target is second, which is a bit extreme, considering we have the fourth, we have the fourth best car on the grid. And probably still the fourth best car on the grid um, but we're not far off we're in third as long as we can stay ahead of Aston Martin we should be safe at the end of the season uh, our long term objective is to win the Constructors Championship um, it's not that long term they're expecting us to do it next year <laughs> so yeah I don't think that's going to happen either and we have medium confidence with the board so that's an extra 750,000 not too bad let's check our inbox uh, we are in debt briefly but we've cleared that that'll be from the gearbox uh, and the ERS well we've already bought the ERS so that'll be for the gearbox that, that'll be what put us in debt uh, let's have a look at the F2 results Iwasa with the win Fittipaldi's up there Vashore's up there have a look at the full results. Uh, so, uh, Deruvula won the sprint. Fittipaldi second in the sprint. Iwasa fourth with the fastest lap. And then first with the fastest lap. Yeah, Iwasa's got some pace. Fittipaldi doing quite well as well. Part of the Red Bull driver program this year, if I remember rightly. Uh, not a great weekend for Porsche, who is best of the class in terms of stats let's see what that's done to the championship standings Iwasa has overtaken Teo Porsche 
Hmm, interesting. We don't have any profile on Iwasi yet. Someone to think about, maybe. Uh, right, back to the inbox. Uh, there we go. In debt. Yeah, that's been dealt with. Um, board's grumbling probably a little bit about the debt. No, they're okay. It was only f less than 50 grand, so they're okay with that. Uh, disappointed with uh, our finishing position, but this is what annoys me. It never takes into <coughs> account your starting position. So, whereas some of the other disappointments are probably merited, this one I don't think was that merited. Um, like I said, to get Lewis up from 20th to 5th, uh, I think it was a damn good job and just a shame. It kind of went wrong a little bit for George, otherwise we could have been looking at a podium for him. Uh, right. Let's have a quick look at our facilities. We are giving the board their final upgrade. That'll be in before the end of the season. That's good. Uh, we don't get notifications. I don't know if this is a bug or, or by design, but we don't get email notifications now when these facilities drop into a point where they're going to need a refurb, which is a little frustrating because you can just be uh, you know, minding your own business, waiting for the emails that never come. Six and a half mil to get the team hub maxed out. It's a bit too much at the moment. Let's take a look at our cars. Something failed in the inspection. It's a suspension. Uh, okay, that's that replaced. Let's take a look at spare parts. We've got more chassis coming. Uh, we've got more side pods coming. We've got to build another suspension. I think, possibly. Yeah, let's build one. It's unlikely we'll actually develop anything further on the suspension side. We have got that new front wing that's in the works right now. Uh, got some research projects that are due to finish before the next Grand Prix. Once again, I'm... Uh, a little bit surprised that they didn't address it over the uh, the gap between the games. The facilities are supposed to shut down now for a couple of weeks because of the summer break, but they don't in-game. Uh, and I don't know why they haven't done that. I don't know why they haven't shut everything down um, for that two-week period. Hopefully next year they'll add that in. Right. Uh, 25 days until the next Grand Prix. Let's uh, advance time a little bit. Driver development updates. Uh, so improvement to smoothness and reactions for George. Uh, improvement to smoothness for Lewis. And Mick improves his smoothness, overtaking and defending. Nice. HQ upgrade for Williams. Actually got a picture of James Bowles there. It's good to see. And a spotlight on Gunter. Right, new training schedule for our pit crew. We want to really speed our guys up, so uh, I am going to take a lot of this car building out and replace it with gym training. Not too worried about car building. Uh, I do want to work on car release. So, let's go to uh, some pit stop drills for car release. Do I do two races in one stream? Uh, no, normally only do one. Um, because we run the race in, in real time. So... The streams last about three hours, um, but I do them uh, most nights of the week, during the week. Uh, we will be doing another another race tomorrow. I was going to do uh, some Dark Descent, but uh, I'm going to uh, probably put that game down for a little while. 
wait for the next patch. And it's still a little buggy. So uh, we'll do another race tomorrow as well. There we go. And uh, let's see if we can get a bit more gym training in there. Not too worried about car building. I'll try and get those uh, pit stop times down. Let's take that uh, jack training off. Place that with gym training as well. So that will take uh, a little bit off the pit stop time. Getting down to the low 2.3s. That means we might start potentially scoring a couple of points. Uh, don't really want to eat into their rest time. I want their fatigues to stay low. I don't want it to start building up too quickly. Uh, so we'll go with that. That'll be a nice little uh, boost to improving mistake chances and uh, improving pit stop time as well. Right, maybe I can go a little bit better. Where else could we take something? We could take some off more, some more off jacks. Let's see if we can find. There we go. So let's go gym training. That takes a little bit more of that. And then let's uh, see what could we take something off. Car release. Let's go that to jacks on that one. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. That's uh, nine hundredths of a second saving and reducing our chance of a mistake down to just over 10% as well. Yeah, let's go with that. Right. Uh, what next? What next? What next? Still looking at uh, potentially getting rid of Jared at the end of the season. We're waiting on the scouting reports for Diego Tondi. That's our spare side pod and our spare rear wings. So we've got two spare side pods now and three spare rear wings. Good. And that's the new rear wing that is a big improvement for our car. And we've got three days and then five days till research projects are done. I might look at maybe doing another project rather than a research. Might actually build a new chassis. Uh, let's take a look at our remaining cost cap. So we've got 24 million left. And like I said, if we need new engines, that's effectively just 14 million left. Because that's going to be 10 million for the engines. Um, hmm. I don't want to commit to new engines too early. I mean, I'm looking at the tracks we've got coming up. Zandvoort's next. Uh, got a chance of rain in that one. Uh, Monza is going to be flat out and probably dry. Uh, there is an issue on Singapore. I've raced this uh, now, and uh, I was talking about the whole section by speed thing. Uh, you can actually see where it's not quite right. They did the same with Barcelona, where they didn't take out the... Uh, the color coding but it actually affects the performance in that corner so where that yellow line is on the bottom half of the track that's obviously where you had the uh, the right left uh, and then the short straight to the left right going back underneath the uh, the overpass to link up to the straight that it is is there uh, obviously they took that out this season um, this will be the first year where they've removed that completely but the cars they get to about where the yellow line is and then they just lift and coast all the way to the corner um, that's got to be a bug um, I really hope that gets patched out 
because it's supposed to be a, a great overtaking opportunity and you just don't get any overtakes because everybody just immediately lifts off uh, almost as soon as they uh, they get onto that straight and just glides into the corner uh, at low speed. It's it's a bit a bit bad. Uh, Suzuka, we need a good engine for that. Uh, LaSalle, uh, that's medium corners. The entire track is medium corners. And then, you know, fast straights. That's another sprint weekend. Uh, Mexico is a fast track. Um, that's another fast track and another sprint weekend. That's a fast track. Abu Dhabi is a bit more balanced. I don't know if our current engine supply is going to last for all those Grand Prix. We might have to take extra engines. So with that in mind, I'm not going to be doing any intense research. It's going to be just standard if we do research at all. Uh, sorry, just, uh, if we do development at all. Let's have a quick look. We are... 30 days away from the next ATR period. I don't know. How much extra speed I can get out of the car. Now dirty air tolerance is pretty good. Definitely want to improve low and medium speed performance. Not so worried about the high speed. Uh, that's going to hurt our acceleration though, which isn't great already. Uh, if I take some weight off the underfloor. Really strip it down. Go with that. You know, I kind of like the look of that. Maybe if I do that, though. Try to improve the acceleration without sacrificing too much anywhere else. I definitely want the uh, medium downforce to go up. We did have it up by four, didn't we? I do that. All right, I'm prepared to sacrifice a little bit of our airflow sensitivity. go with that that gives us good gains in low and medium speed uh, downforce which we're going to need because they're the two weakest parts of our downforce package uh, that will also give us a little boost to our acceleration which we desperately need because it is a bit sluggish in the acceleration gives us a little bit more top speeds takes a bit more weight out of the car uh, and that extra medium downforce it's definitely going to be useful with LaSalle coming up. Yeah, 
There we go. Right, so, uh, next question is, can we get this in time for the sale? Easily. Yeah, so, uh, can we get it in time for Suzuka? I only got one engineer, so no, uh, is the answer. Because we'd have to emergency manufacture, which would cost us an absolute arm and a leg. But we can get it in time for the sale, which means we've then got it for one, two, three, four, five, six weekends. And we've got a sprint at Sao Paulo. And we've got a sprint at Austin uh, as well. So, yeah. That'll uh, that'll come in quite handy there. So let's go ahead and do that. We might even be able to speed it up a bit uh, when one of these projects finishes. So actually, let me take an engineer off that. Let's go to our underfloor project and add an extra engineer. There we go. Uh, can I do that anywhere else? Let's take another engineer off here. That's not going to change the time scale. It's almost done. There we go. And now we are potentially in range to maybe get get it on one car for Suzuka. Maybe. Um, we'll see. That's the side pods done. That's the suspension manufactured. So let's start a new research project for next season. We haven't done a rear wing project yet, so let's get that started. Uh, no changes to the downforce levels. Airflow sensitivity is going to be affected, so we want to max that out. Uh, we want to really max out our acceleration and DRS. And then... I think... I'll just drop those down just a touch. Like that. There we go. Uh, I just want the one engineer on that. 43 days. So, yeah. Right. Front wing is still 10 days out. Should be able to get that for Zambort. Suspension is done. What research shall we do next? Uh, side pods are affected as a suspension. We've done two chassis projects already. Our engine cooling hasn't been great this season, so we'll do another side pod. Uh, that is definitely getting hit a bit next year. As is airflow. And again, just the one engineer. There you go, it's another million. You can see how quickly we go through <laughs> our budget. Uh, just even doing basic research. Uh, it uh, it starts getting gobbled up really quickly. All right, new front wing is done. Let's start manufacturing some spare parts. Let's say some spare parts. Let's start manufacturing some parts in general. Uh, let's see. We want six of those. This will be the last front wing we make this year. Uh, so, the Grand Prix is in eight days. We will have one each and one spare going into that Grand Prix. Again, we're not going to rush because we can't afford the budget. Um, it's not a massive up step from the current ring, uh, wing that we're running anyway. So, we can always have just one car run it in Zanvoort and then have both cars run it in Monza. Uh, let's do another research project. We haven't done a front wing yet, so let's get that started. Uh, again, brake cooling is going to be affected. Uh, brake cooling is not too bad. Uh, 
airflow sensitivity, we definitely want that maxed out. And downforce gains. Less concerned about that. We'll just go like that. Again, one engineer. It's another 1.6 million. There we go. Front wing design is complete. Board attendance at the Grand Prix. Some of our board members have shown an interest in attending the Dutch Grand Prix. Uh, board confidence increased times two for a successful result. Or decreased by two. Uh, well, we're going to go for it. Just hope we get a good result. <laughs> I'm quietly confident we'll be okay. Okay, we've got our spare chassis done. Excellent. Uh, there's our scouting. Jared Murphy has low morale. Well, Jared Murphy might be getting replaced. So that's fine. <laughs> uh, there are the stats for Tondi, whose salary is quite low, actually. He's not the golden boy that he was last time around. That is very much now uh, Enrico Balbo. Uh, let's go to Tondi's profile. Let's take a look at his stats and do a comparison. Uh, so, same on cooling. One worse on DRS, and then he's better on high speed, medium speed, low speed. Same on drag, better on airflow management. And he is younger and... Ah. does not have the same rock star stats as uh, Mr. Balbo um, who is just a beast now you can see the difference <laughs> if I can get him I, I think it would be nice to get him. Let's see if we can persuade him to join us. We're going to offer him a five-year deal. Uh, it's going to cost 7.3 mil, 7.4 mil to break his contract. It's not going to cost us anything to replace Jared because he's going to be out of contract at the end of the season. Uh, salary is going to be bad. Um, let's try dropping him down a little bit. See if I can get him down to, say, 4 mil. Because it's a huge wage difference. No, but he's not far off. He's happy with the signing fee. He's happy with the contract length and the uh, the start date. Just wants a little bit more money. Okay, let's try 4.1 mil. Boom, there we go. He took a £300,000 a year, or $300,000 a year uh, pay cut. But we got him. Enrico Balbo will be our new head of aero next year. <clears throat> so, uh, will Red Bull go for Jared Murphy? That will be interesting to see. Uh, that has put me in debt. Oh, that's going to piss the board off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. All right, there we go. We've got our cars kind of prepped. Uh, we do actually, before we go any further, because I will forget to do this, uh, let's make sure that the new wings are on. 
Uh, I've only got two. It's not a massive improvement, as you can see. I'm going to give it to George. George needs the extra pace. We'll keep Lewis on the current wing. And then we'll give him the new, rear, uh, the new front wing at Monza as well. Uh, so that's it. Uh, we are prepped and ready for Netherlands for Zandvoort, which will be tomorrow night's race. We will kick off at the usual time of 9pm UK time. Uh, so uh, make sure you join us for that. Uh, until then, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I'll be back with some more F1 Manager very soon.